We're coming down from a solar storm that brought us some gorgeous aurora in time for Valentine's Day, and another Earth-directed solar storm is on its way. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week continues to be active. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have no less than 10 active regions in Earth view. Now the big X-flare player, that was region 3213, has finally rotated off of the sun's west limb, but we still have a ton of activity. In fact, back on the 12th, regions 3216 and 17 fired off some solar storms that went mainly east of Earth, but they did manage to graze us right on Valentine's Day, and they brought some gorgeous aurora. We're still kind of dealing with it now and seeing some gorgeous shows, especially at high latitudes and even down into mid-latitudes a little bit. But aurora photographers, if you didn't catch the show on Valentine's Day, don't worry, we have yet another solar storm because right around the 15th, Region 3220 launched a solar storm that's Earth-directed and along with another filament eruption, these both uh, storms are headed kind of back to back towards Earth. Uh, NASA models and NOAA models show that we could have impact as early as midday on the 17th or possibly into the 18th. So this should be an extended show. It could definitely bring Aurora down to mid-latitudes. So Aurora photographers, keep your batteries charged and get ready. Switching to our radio blackout meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux over the past week, you can definitely tell things are very active. Not only are we popping a lot of solar flares, but you can see the X-ray flux is sitting well above the seafloor. This means by proxy, the solar flux is also remaining quite high. We're still sitting in the well into the triple digits, and radio blackouts are definitely on the menu. Just since the 10th, we've popped over 20 M-class flares and even an X-class flare. So radio blackouts are going to continue to be an issue. Even though we are beginning to calm down over the last day or two, the R1 to R2 level radio blackouts are still going to continue with us easily through this next week as we have more regions rotating into Earth view from the far side. But radio amateurs, enjoy the fact that in between the radio blackouts that radio propagation should remain in the good range. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we've actually been having quite a bit of activity, either due to some fast solar wind or just grazing solar storms that have been giving us some gorgeous aurora. In fact, over the first couple weeks of February, we've been dealing with some fast solar wind that kept us kind of around active conditions. And then we kind of quieted down as we got into around the 12th, the second week of February. But th that was when we were getting a lot of solar storm launches from all these new active regions rotating into Earth view. And of course, one of those big storms hit Earth and gave us some gorgeous aurora starting around the 15th. Well, it was still Valentine's Day, according to you know, the Western Hemisphere and it managed to bump us up to storm levels. And that's when we got some beautiful views. It cleared down into mid-latitudes, and these conditions have been continuing over the last 48 hours or so. Things are beginning to calm down now, but that calming down is not going to last for very long because we have yet another solar storm that looks like it's going to hit us right around late on the 17th and into the 18th. So Aurora photographers, hey, don't take time looking at your pictures now. Keep those batteries charged because it looks like you're going to get yet another chance. And during this recent solar storm over the past couple days, there was sustained southward magnetic field that lingered long enough to really bring out the reds in the stormtime Aurora, which was beautiful and just in time for Valentine's Day. And although I had a ton of photos sh shared with me, I don't have time to highlight them all. I'll just highlight some of them that really shows off the gorgeous colors, like this photo in Norway. And we had gorgeous views in Finland. And we had beautiful views in Scotland. And as we move over the pond, we got gorgeous views in Iceland. 
And as we move to the Western Hemisphere, Aurora was seen all over Canada, like this in Yellowknife. And we had great reds in Quebec. We had a lot of shots from Manitoba. We also saw Aurora in Saskatchewan. And of course, in Alberta. And as we drop into the United States, Aurora was seen in Massachusetts. And a lot in Minnesota. It was also seen in Wisconsin. And it was seen in North Dakota. And of course, South Dakota. And it was also in the West. It was seen in Washington State. And even in Oregon. And as we dip down, well, of course, it was also seen in Alaska. And as we dip down to the Southern Hemisphere, Aurora was seen in New Zealand, many places in New Zealand, and in Tasmania. And believe it or not, it was also seen in Western Australia. And it was seen near Sydney. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo A's view, you can see all of the active regions, and they're very, very busy firing off solar storms. But to orient yourself, you can see region 3213 rotating off of the west limb in Stereo's view. That was one of the big X-flare players that has now rotated to the sun's far side. But really, what I want you to focus on is the east limb, especially in the north. You can see a bright region there right on the limb that is definitely firing big solar storms and possibly big solar flares as well. This is region 3229 that has been just labeled recently, and it is one of the new uh, flare players that we're watching right now. We can also see that there are some regions in the south that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this is why the solar flux is going to stay up into the, the triple digits very easily, possibly climbing a little bit higher uh, over the next week or so. It is also why radio noise is going to stay in the moderate range and why radio blackouts are going to continue to be on the menu easily over this next week and possibly longer. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 20th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky and, I don't know, maybe some aurora from a coming solar storm, now is your perfect chance. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that solar storm that's Earth-directed, and we could definitely get some decent aurora for this. At high latitudes, NOAA's expecting minor storm conditions, but we have up to about a 70% chance of a major storm, and that will happen right around the 18th. But at high latitudes, the aurora shows could definitely continue easily through the weekend and possibly into the early part of next week before things calm down. And this is because the Earth's magnetic shield is already a bit rattled from all the activity that it's been seeing over the past week or more. Now, at mid-latitudes, we are also expecting minor storm conditions, but things are going to be a little bit shorter when it comes to the duration. Nonetheless, we're still expecting uh, that we could see as much as a 20% chance of a major storm right around the 18th. So aurora photographers, you definitely have a chance to see this. Uh, we could get aurora cleared down deep into mid-latitudes. Remember, if that magnetic field orientation of that solar storm is the right way, and we won't know that until the solar storm hits. So be sure to monitor uh, the aurora communities on social media because they'll be reporting aurora in from the field as they see it. Switching to your solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are calming down compared to last week. We have had some of the big flare players rotate to the sun's far side, and this means that solar flux is definitely dipping down out of the 200s. We're sitting in about the mid-160s right now and could dip down a little bit further to about the 150s, but it's probably going to stay about like that. And this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders 
that radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to stay in the good range. However, we do still have some big flare players. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 30, 25 to 30 percent chance of M-class flares. This is an R1, R2 level radio blackout over the next few days, and that's probably going to continue because of regions uh, 3226 and 3229. So we aren't out of the, the woods when it comes to radio blackouts. That's going to continue to be with us easily over this next week. But we have dipped quite a bit when it comes to X-class flare risk. We're only down to about a 5% X-class flare risk. And that's good because that means the big radio blackouts are probably not going to be a problem. Now, as we take a look at radiation storm and the polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are in the D1 normal range, and that's good news for all you frequent flyers and air crew. We are having quiet conditions right now, and the risk for radiation storm is really pretty minimal. It's only about a 5% risk, and that's easily going to continue over this next week because we don't have any big flare players that are kind of on that west limb. So things are good right now, and we just have a slightly elevated risk level, so just be sure to remain vigilant. So the space weather this week continues to deliver. We're just coming down from a solar storm that gave us some decent aurora show, and we have another solar storm that's on its way. So aurora photographers uh, expect that the solar storm to impact late on the 17th and into the 18th, and it could actually bring aurora deep into mid-latitudes if that magnetic fig configuration of the storm is correct. So stay vigilant, keep your batteries charged, because it could be a wonderful weekend for you. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things are quieting down just a little bit compared to last week. We don't have as many big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, but radio blackouts are still going to be things you're going to contend with on the day side. And this is mainly due to regions 3226 and 3229. The one nice thing, however, is that that means that radio propagation stays in the good range on Earth's day side as long as you can handle that moderate noise on the band. So just kind of hang in there over this week. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we've had a lot of aurora on the night side, which is not so great for GPS reception. And now we have radio blackouts too on Earth's day side. So GPS reception has likely been a little bit troublesome for you as well. And you're just going to have to grin and bear it for about another three or four days before things will begin to calm down. And also, if you are a, a drone pilot, UAV pilot of any sort like that, please remember that when the solar storms actually hit, it can throw off your magnetometers just a little bit. So be sure to calibrate often and stay out from under any aurora. I'm Tamitha Sko, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.